Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Now to introduce you to our, sad to say, final guest speaker for the day, who is Michael de Groot. Now, Michael, who is Michael? Well, he's a Dutchman. He's hugely passionate about storytelling. And his quest is to enable small business owners become storytellers and share engaging stories about themselves and their businesses. He does this through his own small business, Staying Alive. Sorry, sorry, Michael, I just had to. That is fine. <laughs> Where we enjoy producing visually impactful cartoons and animation campaigns, engaging audiences and giving them a unique insight into an organization's story and value proposition. One of our future aims is to deliver these stories via augmented reality. Uh, in addition, they also deliver the Share Your Story storytelling workshops, of which I have been, um, online to help business owners develop their own story blueprint. Michael is the host and producer of the Share Your Story podcast, where he invites small business owners to share their own stories with the aim of inspiring new and existing business owners. In his personal time, he is a student of Taiko. Taiko, yeah. Drumming, Taiko drumming, yoga, mindfulness, meditation, and minimalism. Just his own way of developing a more meaningful life. Now, I've had the pleasure of knowing Michael for a few years. So, <laughs> I thought it gives me great pleasure to say the floor is yours. Thank you, Carol. Oh, my God. Some amazing speakers ahead of me well done you guys um using neil's terminology you definitely knocked it out of the park well done <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff um really enjoyed it some huge amount of things to reflect on and i will definitely be watching the replay from this just so i can make better notes because i didn't want to stop watching people uh, and they were talking so animated and, and kind of look at my, my pad. Thank you, Carol, for the introduction. Thanks for having me as well. And um, yeah, I, I used to row in Amsterdam, Neil, um, on the Amstel River. And I, I was a very good rower. But uh, when I first started, the, I don't know, if it's the same terminology in the UK, but a single boat, you know, for a single person, it's called a skiff in Dutch anyway. And you don't realize, unless you, you kind of keep the oars out um, and not get them too close to the boat, you literally just flip over. And when I first got in the boat, um, you know, going down the river and there were these bigger boats that created lots of waves. And if you're not paying attention, the boat just flips over. And it's that attention that I talk to people about when I tell them or teach them or give them some insights into using storytelling. And it's that A tension, so letter A dash tension t-e-n-s-i-o-n a tension to get people's attention you need to create tension <laughs> so all the movie makers know this because why do we watch what's it nowadays films are three hours long we watch them for three hours why <laughs> how can we manage that even and it's because they keep your attention and keep you in tension the other thing is the stories that we're watching, whether it be on TV, radio, adverts, films, um, serials, Netflix, you name it, we're just obsessed by all of it. And the only reason we watch them all is because they're our stories. So the difference between you and me is only because you're sitting over there and I'm sitting over here. No, 
the difference is we're, we're just a different human being, but all of our stories are exactly the same. Exactly the same. Let's just go through it very briefly. We're born onto planet Earth. We have a mother, a father, and we have siblings. We learn to eat. That's the first thing. Then we learn to walk. Um, we get to recognize our parents. We start to speak. We then go to school. We educate ourselves. We get educated, hopefully, a little bit. And then we've got to get a job. We've got to, you know, master money. Who's ever mastered money? And then, you know, we, we eventually, maybe in the future, we retire, although there's a lot less of that these days. And then, yeah, unfortunately, we get diseased in some way, and then we perish. That's it. That's our story. It's exactly the same. Every human being that's ever walked on the planet has had exactly the same story. And in that story, we have good days and bad days. We have challenges to overcome exactly what happens in the movies, in every single story and every single story that we're captivated by and we want to listen to and we want to watch. So I've have a bunch of my own stories. You don't want to hear them because they are the same as your stories. <laughs> so we all have the same stories of challenges and we've heard today how we can overcome some of those, some amazing strategies, philosophies, ideas. And you know, we've all come across teachers and speakers in our lives. And then at a certain point in time, we go, that's it. That's the solution. I know this is the way I can solve my problems. I'm going to go down that route. And it solves some of your problems. And then it kind of fades away because nothing is permanent. Nothing is forever. Then you find another teacher or you hear somebody speak and go, that's it. I'm going that direction. I can make a lot of money this way and I can learn about myself and improve my own personal life, my relationships. Yeah. And then some months and weeks and years pass and it fades in the background. Then someone else comes along. Anyway, you know where I'm going with this. And this happened to me too, every single time. But it didn't start until around about 2004 when I woke up. You know, I was in the kind of mill of going to work, earning lots of money, having a big house, wanting a bigger house, getting a car, not having the best car, wanting a bigger car, wanting more money and have no money at the end of the month left. Where was it all going? I was spending it. That's where it was going. So when I woke up in 2004 and I found all of these teachers, I've been on this journey of discovery, learning about myself, because that's what it's all about, right? Discovering and learning about yourself. And then one day my wife suggested that we should run a happiness course. And I went, happiness course. Okay. I like happiness. Oh, we should do this for free. Back to the giving uh, locally uh, for an organization called Action for Happiness. And you can be a facilitator. So, oh, I can share a few things about happiness. Little did I know where it was going to take me. Um, I heard about this word suffering. I started listening to an audible book by the Dalai Lama, and he was talking about suffering, having compassion for people suffering, compassion for people suffering. Yeah, it's about my happiness, isn't it? Not about theirs. Well, you should try it. Then I'm on my mindfulness journey and my mindfulness meditation. I'm closing my eyes and I'm breathing. All this rubbish comes up in your head and you go focus back on your breath. I think we've all been there. And if you haven't, I'm sure you will at some stage. And so that's mindfulness now, is it? Okay. So then I'll listen to certain podcasts uh, to make me happier. 
And this one podcast is called 10% Happier, real title by a chap, an American guy. Check it out. It is really very good. Uh, 10% Happier by Dan Harris, a, a news anchor in America who was having some drugs in his pleasure time and had a meltdown live on air. And he then changed his life and went into a different direction. He then studied mindfulness, the kind of Buddhist teachings. Oh, by the way, I'm not religious. Uh, that was knocked out of me in Amsterdam when I used to have to get up at four o'clock in the morning on a Friday uh, to go to church with my mother, who was a Hindu converted to Catholicism. And I saw the priest drink wine at six o'clock in the morning. And when he drank wine, I had to ring the bell when I was about seven. So since that time, I've never been religious, but I don't judge religion. I don't practice a specific religion, but I embrace the teachings of religion. So I'm not a Buddhist, but I'm interested what the Buddhism philosophies talk about. And it's only just philosophy at the end of the day. It only becomes a real experience when you do something right for all of us. So everything I'm talking about is just philosophy to you and me. But once you start to experience it, you start to realize that particular practice is useful. So listening to the podcast, 10% Happier, there's a lady on there called Andrea Feller. And uh, she's a Buddhist kind of Buddhism mindfulness, you know, teacher since like 2003. She happens to be the same age as me, which is interesting. And then she was quite assertive on this podcast, but it really took my attention. So I checked her out after I listened to the podcast and because she was talking about something I had never heard of. Some of you may know it's a teaching in Buddhism called dependent origination. Yeah. What a jazzy title, right? I went, what you can't even from the title, it makes no sense. How can you even, you know, at least when you talk about resilience, you kind of know what it is. Um, what, you know, so I had no idea. I went, okay, I'm going to check this out, listen to her teaching. And I still didn't understand it, but I kept going with it because there was something in that and she was talking about the cause of suffering. And I went, wow, if you can explain to me the cause of suffering, you're going to get a gold medal from me. Because if there is a way to stop this for myself or even share it with others, potentially like I'm doing today, uh, that could be pretty awesome. So anyway, I went down the journey of, of discovering more, looking it up, and I couldn't find that much written about it. And then some people were going, oh, it's been translated incorrectly and this, that and the other. And I probably haven't got time, so I'm not even going to show you a slide with the meaning, but there are 12 parts to it and it's a cycle. And I'm just going to share a couple of things from it that have really kind of hit a note with me, let's put it that way. First of all, that we all go through suffering, right? Basic, I mean, everybody does, and we all want to be happy. So you've got the suffering, which is unpleasant, and you've got the happiness, which is pleasant. And that is just a feeling, but that feeling will then determine where we go next in the cycle. And usually where we go next in the cycle, if there's something unpleasant, we crave, let's put down lockdown, we crave to be out of lockdown and be, be happy again, you know? And, but it's just a feeling. It's a feeling tone, how they refer to it. But if you started noticing, and that's when I realized that mindfulness, for me anyway, just philosophy to you if you haven't come across it. Mindfulness is just noticing and being more aware. And somewhere in whoever said it earlier, I think it was Yinka talking about wisdom and she talked about awareness. 
that's it. She's right. It is about wisdom. It is about awareness and just noticing. So when you go, ah, oh, I've got this unpleasant feeling about this. Where's that come from? It's like a cloud that will just pass, right? As long as you don't hold on to it, which is the other bit. So we got the unpleasantness, the craving to be back to pleasantness. <laughs> we then go to clinging, right? We hold on to stuff. So if we now go, oh yeah, this is it. You know how I said earlier, that's the teaching that's going to save me and get me out of suffering. But it's not, it will just pass because nothing is permanent. When we realize that nothing is permanent, then we become more aware of our feelings that again, they are not permanent either. Resilience isn't permanent, Yinka. It will come and go depending on where you are on the cycle. But the unpleasantness, I'm just checking the time. How long, Carol? I'm muted. <laughs> you have until 2.54. Oh, my God. No, I won't need that much. <laughs> so the let's go back to unpleasantness is usually from aversion, greed, or delusion. What the hell does that mean? Well, aversion, I understand. You, you just want to avoid it. How many times have we avoided the difficult conversation we want to have with our partner, with our friend, with our children, with our parents? You know, we, we kind of go, no, and I'm not going to go there because it's going to make me feel stressed. It's going to feel, make them feel stressed. So I'm just going to avoid it but probably it won't. Greed. Well, I would like to think I'm not greedy, but yeah, everybody wants money. You know, if we only had money, all our problems would be solved. And then, yeah, we are deluded, but I'm still figuring that one out, actually. What am I deluded about? Everything? Am I just deluded about, <laughs> you know, that I'm actually making sense to you all with what I'm saying? <laughs> Am I deluded that, you know, this actually will help you? Am I deluded that you're going to do something after I've spoken to you about it? Am I deluded about my own identity? Like Carol gave this, I nearly messaged Carol and said, don't read out my bio because I'm just deluded about it all, you know. I'm just, I'm just a human going through suffering uh, on this spinning planet, trying to do the best that I can, just like all of you are. <laughs> we are no different. We are living the exact same story. Sure, we may have some good things to share or some interests that we have that we want to practice. But yeah, we're, I... I'm only talking about myself, of course. I am deluded. But all of our experiences are made by the mind. They are led by our minds. And this is where it started, the penny started to drop, because it's the conditioned mind that's leading us. How did that happen? Well, I'm sorry to say, but if you're a parent, you are doing it to your kids. You are conditioning them. If you're a teacher, you are definitely doing it to, you, to the kids. You're conditioning them. If you're the press, the media, the TV, the films, the news, Neil, you are definitely doing that to everybody. You're conditioning all of us all of the time. If you're government, you're doing it and the commercials and the advertising and Facebook and Twitter and social media, all of them are party to it. And then the worst offender of all, ourselves. 
We condition ourselves every single minute of the day. We just repeat the same conditioned responses all the time. Now, that's not a problem. It really isn't your fault. It isn't your fault. But it can lead you into suffering. And that's when they talk about ignorance. If we're ignorant about that suffering, then we're in trouble. Start noticing it, start being aware of it, start applying some wisdom and awareness to our conditioned mind. That's it. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. And if you want the slides, I'll happily send them to you all. Thank you. Wonderful. You're welcome. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests. So do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.